All right. What's going on? I know you cannot answer that. Welcome back to episode six. Not back to episode six. Welcome back to Forbidden Authenticity Within. This is episode six, where I will be talking about the two biggest lessons I have took, I have gained, I have been acquired with from ayahuasca, from mother ayahuasca. These two lessons, for one, changed the way I thought about stuttering. That's one of the lessons. And it's so broad, though, because, yeah, I'll explain it. And the second lesson is just changed the way I saw life, the way I saw myself, like, completely, completely. And I'm going to do my best to break down exactly why it was so impactful to me so that you may be able to get a glimpse of what I saw inside of that experience. On this episode, I will not be answering any guest questions simply because I only got one and I don't want to have a whole separate section for just one question. I need at least like three. So for next episode, um, I, I may have a guest next next episode but next episode I do with myself just by myself if you want to ask me any question about stuttering about sexual dysfunction about psychedelics I'm not an expert in psychedelics but like anything that you want cool with me I can answer it not answer like give you the answer but answer in like what I from my experience the best not the best, but what is the most, what is the answer most aligned with me? It's not the answer. There's no the answer. It's the answer that is most aligned with me is what you'll get. So let's dive in. Oh, sorry. If you want to ask a question, there's a link down below in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description. If you're watching on podcast, it's in the description as well. So let's dive in. If you do not know what ayahuasca is, I'm not going to be the one to ex- to explain it to you. I'll do a very shitty job of that. I'm very bad at explaining things when it <laughs> when it comes to things like this. because I just don't spend the time myself to like research it, to research like what goes into it and like the traditions of it and stuff. It's not really what I do. So I would say if you do not know what ayahuasca is, and this is very confusing to you, the briefest summary ever that people might get mad at me at is it's a It's a type of healing psychedelic drink that people make. I say people, it's like the shamans of... See, this is how shitty I am at explaining stuff. Anyway, it's primarily done in South America, I believe. And you usually take this little shot of a drink inside uh being 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 guided by a shaman or shamans um it's a psychedelic drink where you drink it and it can last i don't know two to eight hours of this journey that is being guided by this by what people call mother I, m- mother, I, mother ayahuasca. So I've done this five times. You would think I'd be better at explaining it. I'm not. 
um, and on five times in two separate e and two 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 separate events. The first time I did it, I went to a ten day re a ten day retreat center in Peru. The second time was in Colombia, which was just a, was just a night. The the night was not nearly as powerful as the ten day. Kind of makes sense. And the lessons I'm sharing with you, the two came from the 10 day. And to give you a little background on this is I was, I believe 21 and I didn't really know much about ayahuasca. I just heard Joe Rogan talk about it or uh, Aubrey Marcus on the Joe Rogan podcast talk about it. And by this time I've probably done mushrooms like 20 times or something and I felt really like when I do mushrooms I feel like I have access to a different level of consciousness and that experiencing that um, being like able to think thoughts that are that are un, uh, that are unavailable to me in this sober consciousness was addictive in a sense it was like yeah it was insane to have such a clear like it's it's not like when you're drunk and you're thinking dumb thoughts and you're like i i i don't think these thoughts when when i'm so when i'm sober but when i was on mushrooms it was like i'm extremely clear even more clear than when i'm so than when i'm sober i don't know how it's possible but even more clear and i have access to deeper thoughts to deep to deeper behavior pa- behavior patterns that i that i do and i found a lot of healing in that I'm not telling you to do the same but that's what got me into ayahuasca so i booked this flight to this 10 day ayahuasca retreat. I just basically looked up on Google, um, ayahuasca retreat centers. And then I found a cool one. I went to, I went to Peru 10 days inside of these 10 days, there is no cell phone use. So when I was 21, my mom was pretty terrified. Like, (laughs) She threat. She threat. She threatened me. Not threatened me. Not not threatened me. But she told me I was gonna die. Um. She was pretty scared. Everyone was pretty scared. And uh, so let's 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 dive into it. I couldn't go my phone for these ten days. Let's dive into the lessons and. The first lesson of what I want to share is it was during the actually both of these both of these lessons came from the third drink. So the first drink was I believe on the first night we uh, we arrived first drink of ayahuasca the first ceremony. The second was on the third night. The third was on the fifth night and so on. Or maybe the sixth night. Both of these lessons came from the third drink. This third drink was, um, yeah, something else. So I basically just took like a shot. Like you would take a shot of a shot of vodka, but it was oh, disgusting, disgusting. It's the something very very hard for me was to not puke as soon as I even smelt it. But you you have to keep it in your system for at at least like I, I don't know how long for it to work for for it for you to have the benefits of it. Um, so not puking it was so hard at the beginning. Um, when I first even smelt it and then drank it, it was 
really hard. But let's dive into, um, you, you, you might want to know about this stuff I'm talking about, but let's dive into the lessons. The first lesson was, I came in with the intention in this third ceremony that I want to get to the root of stuttering. Like if I'm able to access a consciousness and a depth that I'm not able to access in my life right now, then let's see what I, what mother ayahuasca shows me about stuttering. Will it show me something new? Will it reinforce what I already know? Like, let's find the truth, like the very foundational truth about stuttering. So I came in, came in with that intention and this is what Mother Ayahuasca showed me. This is what she guided me through. All right. She showed me everything but stuttering. I'll give you an example. There is a time, and this is still very, very clear in, in my mind. So my eyes are closed. The shamans are playing their music. Boom, 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 boom. I am completely, completely sent. I am not here. I am somewhere else. I am being guided. Like I feel Mother Ayahuasca guiding me through different, through different environments, through different lessons, through different, e through different emotions, may, may make me puke and purge and having all these like just bringing me through the depths of what I could possibly feel and the it's very hard to explain but the the sights I saw and things like this and it got to a point where I was having an amazing experience I was feeling so good and my experience in 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 my con in my consciousness if you want to say i what i saw my my eyes were closed but what i saw in my mind was a piece of paper and on this piece of paper was the experience that i was having and in my mind, the paper started to rip and rip and rip. And I started to struggle against that and say, no, don't, don't leave. I want this experience to stay. And when, when, when I had that thought, when I had that resistance to continue in this journey, Mother Ayahuasca just like gave me the sense of, Re being very very cute very very close to pu to puking I'd almost puke and then that would be like the training she would give me to let go but I'd be okay 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 you can rip the sheet and then the sheet would start to rip and I would like either I don't know if I saw the sheet at the sheet after it or if I just felt that it was very uncertain. And I think what was coming next was pain. So I resisted it again. Like, no, no, please. Like, I, I want to stay with this. I want to stay with these good feelings. And then I would almost puke. And then the sheet would almost rip, almost rip. Like, no. And even if it wasn't like a big no, there was still some sensation in me that was clinging to what I was experiencing and say I do not want this to go 
I was almost puking. And the, the almost puking wasn't just like, Ugh. it wasn't just like you puke and that's it. But I felt so terrible inside. So terrible inside. And then it would be gone in a second. When, when I would say, okay, okay, fine. That feeling of puking, that feeling of, ter of terribleness inside would be gone. And eventually after a few minutes, it might have been like 10 minutes. I don't really know. It might have been two seconds because it feels very long. But eventually my body, my mind was trained to be like, okay, okay. I know if I don't let go, how terrible this is going to be. So I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you, Mother Ayahuasca, to guide me into what you need to guide me into. And then the sheet ripped and I went through a different journey. And the journey was painful. And the and the journey and the journey and the journey was cha was challenging. But then it through this pain and through this challenge I stayed I stayed open. I just I just uh, I just allowed it to happen. Anytime I felt myself tense, I felt like I was going to throw up. So it was training me uh, again to just relax, like relax every muscle, stay open, stay with the experience of this and do not resist it. And it allowed me to like be in a state of non-resistance, even though I was facing challenging things, which was completely new to me. But by the end of this journey, by the end of this journey, Mother Ayahuasca would gift me like, here's the gift for staying open with these amazing, amazing feelings and these amazing pictures in my mind. And I'd feel so fucking good for like a minute. And then the sheet would pop back up and would slowly start to rip. And I'd be like, no, no. And I'd resist it. The same thing would go on. Here's where the lesson came in. Not just the lesson of letting go but something different I guess was I started to clue in of fuck this is really cool like this is really cool how mother ayahuasca is training me to let go like I have, I feel like I have no choice in this. Like if I don't let go, I know I will be throwing up nonstop, and my and I will feel terrible. If I don't just surrender and let go, I really feel like I have no choice. But I, I of course do have a choice, and I'm making a choice to let go. This is really cool. I had this thought, and I was like, thinking already in my brain how I'm going to tell the other people that I'm with doing, do, doing this, how I'm going to tell these people about this experience and how I'm going to tell my family back at home about this experience. And as soon as I had this thought of like, oh, this, this story in my head forming how I'm going to tell these people what's going on, I had this urge to puke again. And I was like, huh, that's cool. <laughs> I started to get in this cycle of like, oh, that's cool. I, I had the urge to puke when I was starting to think about how I want to tell people things. And then I had the urge to puke again. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I had the, I was thinking about, and it started this cycle where like the story got bigger and bigger and bigger in my head of how cool this is. How cool Mother Ayahuasca, each time I, I have a thought about how I want to share my experience, how I'm about to puke, how she's about to make me puke. And each time it happened, I'm like, oh, I want to tell people this more. Like the story just gets cooler and cooler. And it, she brought me to a point where I either I did puke or I was extremely 
feeling shitty and really, really close to really, really close to puking. And then the lesson came to me. The lesson came to me where I realized this and like, I think ayahuasca sent me this too. This is stuttering. Anytime I'm in my head and I'm not present in this moment, I, I, I understood that is when the tendency to stutter will come out. I, I realized it's impossible to stutter when you're completely present in the moment. Because when you're completely present in the moment, you're not having thoughts about the future. You're not having thoughts about how somebody thinks about you. You're not having thoughts about what you should say so that you sound cool. When you're completely present in the moment, you are connected with yourself. You're connected with the, with the, with the moment. There's no anxiety. Anxiety is when you think about the future. When you're, when some part of you is connected to the, connected to the, connected to the future. There's, there's, there's really no tension when, when you're currently so, so submerged in the moment. And I came in with the in, came in with the intention of what is stuttering. And ayahuasca gave me this. I, I didn't realize it at first. I like, well, she didn't tell me anything about stuttering, but I realized this when I was when I was when I was journaling the night after or the morning after of like, oh, she did. There's nothing she could have told me about this is stuttering because stuttering is just a byproduct. So her telling me what stuttering is, is by showing me not directly, hey, this is stuttering, but showing me and training me to be present in the moment. That was, that hit me so hard. That hit me so hard because I reflected on the conversations in my life and the times where I'm thinking, the times where I'm thinking, what does this person think about me? Times I'm thinking, what should I say? Those are the times that I tend to stutter. But the time where those thoughts are gone and I'm present and I'm looking the person in the eye and all that's going on in my life right now is this interaction, this moment. There is no stuttering. There is no stuttering. It's not just with me, but with the hundreds of people that I've worked with. When you remove that that lack of presence because you're and because you're anticipating or because you're fearing because of something when you remove that and you're present in this moment here now there's no stuttering with anybody with anybody because for you to be present in this moment you have to feel safe you have to feel safe it's very hard to to feel present if you don't feel safe maybe impossible because if you don't feel safe of course you're going to be thinking how can i get safe how can i be safe how can i uh, how can i avoid danger so when you're safe and you're present emotionally you feel safe to just express yourself without having to think about it and we're all fluent in a room by ourselves because we feel completely safe there. We don't need to think about what we're saying because our natural abilities come out. 
we naturally are a fluent speaker. It's because we feel safe in a room by ourselves. So when we're present and we feel safe in conversation, there is no stuttering. It's all about that presence. And there's, diff there's different ways to say presence. There's safe. And the last video I created, the last podcast, talked a lot about it. Um, but this was a lesson of truth. Like it allowed me to stop questioning so much of like, what is stuttering? Because I like it reinforced this. I like, oh yeah, like this is it. This is it. It's very fucking clear to me that this is it. And um, it doesn't mean that I know I never stutter. I still do stutter because I'm human. There's times where I do think. There's times where I do fear. There's times where I do have anxiety or not even that shit. There's times where I do have tension in the body for whatever reason. And it stops me from being completely present in what I'm doing. But in that sense, stuttering is a, is a guide. It will come out any time you're not fully here right now. It will show you when you're not fully here in this moment, feeling safe and being yourself. It will show you that. It may be painful when it shows you, but it will show you that. And you can actually develop a relationship with it where you love it. Just like, just like ayahuasca was training me by the throwing up to stay present, you can, uh, you can allow your, st your stutter to train you to be present to show you when you're not being present and to, yeah, bring you to that state where you are feeling safe and you are feeling yourself and you're expressing yourself without these fears of what do they think about me and blah, 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 blah. All right. That was a huge, a huge, a huge lesson. All right. Let's dive into lesson two. And I think this one is going to blow your fucking mind. So I told you this happened on, on the same, on the same um, drink, on the third drink. So I had all this experience with mother, I, mother ayahuasca, basically training me to let go and training me to be present with this moment with the current experience, no matter how challenging it is to learn to let go of their resistances of experiencing it and learning to just like stay open throughout the whole challenge. So by the end, like four hours down the line, I felt so much trust with her because every challenge she brought me through, every uncomfortable moment, terrible sensation, by the way, I, I had to remove those labels of terrible, challenging. I had to remove that and just say, all right, this, this just is right now. I had to remove good, bad, and just say, I, I'm experiencing this right now without labels, without my mind getting in the way and just allowing what, whatever to happen to happen. Um, that's a side note. Um, so by the end of these like four hours, I felt so much trust and love for her because I knew she was on my side. She was guiding me to let go, even though it was challenging, even though it was painful, I knew that she had my best interest at heart. And I felt so much love and so much trust for mother I, for for mother I for mother ayahuasca that for like the last hour even though it was ups and downs 
or the last two hours, even though it was ups and downs, I just stayed open. I just stayed open. And I stayed open so much that Mother I that Mother Ayahuasca then like came to me and I like really sensed her here. And she was like, Chase, you have done uh, you have done amazing. And I wanna give you a gift. Right now, you can feel however you want to feel. How do you want to feel? And I trusted that this wasn't like a trick, a trick, a trick question or anything, because I've been through some challenging experiences on this road. And I was like, I, I would love to feel like Superman. And fucking boom. Like I was. I felt like I was going to explode. I felt like I was going to explode. The love and the power and the trust that was fucking radiating from me. Like I'm surprised my cheeks didn't rip because the smile that I was having and like. Like I'm surprised I didn't explode. I was Beaming, completely fucking beaming, I felt like, with this love, with this power for like 10 minutes. I've never felt anything, anything like that. Um, that complete, every cell inside of me was just fucking full of love and power and trust. And I just was, I fell in love. I was like, oh my God. And at the end of it, she was like, there you go. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. And she then said, okay, for the rest of the night, you can be anybody you, anybody you want to be. Who do you want to be? And I knew again, this wasn't a trick question now at this time in my life or at this camp there was a girl there that I thought was cute I was 21 she was like 36 but she was fucking beautiful fucking beautiful and even though I was 21 I still like like I, I felt like I was falling in love with this girl. Like not just her uh, appearance, but who she was was just so beautiful. And I remembered when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of, I used to watch a lot of videos on game, on like how to pick up girls and things like this. Do not rec, I do not recommend this path. I had to unlearn ninety nine percent of what I've, of what I took in. And there's a lot of poison in that. But I remember I was like, there's this guy that I used to watch. I'm not even going to name his name because I, I met, I met him. Like I've spoke to him many, many times. The guy I used to watch, he used to teach game. And I realized like he is not the person that I thought he was at all. And um, this guy that I used to watch, I said, I want to be him for the rest of the night. And mother, I, be, because I said, I want to be so good at game. Because in my mind, this guy was the best at game, best at picking up girls in the world. And by the way, at this retreat center, there was no sex. There was no, in, there was no, in, there was no intimacy or any of that. So... I wasn't like hoping or thinking I was gonna have sex, but I I was like, I I want this girl to like me. So I, I was like, I wanna be like him for the rest of the night. And she's like, okay, cool. You can be him. And then I got out of this, like kind of slowly peeled out of the ayahuasca hallucinogenic state. And I just felt different. 
the girl was be was be was beside me. I like turned and I said something that was so like I do not remember anything that I said, but I remember how I felt and the response that she was get that she that she was giving me. I was so fucking attractive everything that i was saying it felt like i saw her being like what the fuck like this is so hot and, and when when i would like touch her not in a sexual way i just like felt her like melting into it the time that i wouldn't speak i saw that she like w was craving me to speak and this was so different than before, like bef be before the past five days or so, I was pretty scared to like escalate anything with her to tell her that she's cute or anything like that. I saw her as like, on like almost like a mom thing, but just like so beautiful. Um, so it was weird to like escalate anything with her, but in this state, I, I didn't see her like that and I didn't see her like that anymore. I saw her as like this is this is my girl. And it felt like everything I was saying was just fucking perfect. I was saying things I've never said with like such confidence. And again, I don't remember exact exactly what I said, but we stayed up, just me and her, staring at the stars for hours just talking and getting closer, getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. And it did get to the point, it, like we didn't do, have sex or anything, but it did get to the point where like, we did, we did, we did, we did talk about it. And I just felt like I am the best. Right now, there's no one better than me at, game like this was my mindset when i was 20 when i was 21 in this moment i was like wow this is amazing how can i just be how can i just become this person like that and um the lesson that this taught me was all that changed was a thought in my head that i am this person that I have the ability to be good at game. My self identity changed. The, the, the role that I was playing changed. That's it. Mother, I, Mother Ayahuasca didn't be like, whoa, you wanna be this person? Well, you gotta go learn all, you gotta go watch all of his fucking, all of his fucking, um, what's it called? all of his all all of his seminars you have to watch all of his youtube videos you you have to watch all of you think you can be this person without knowing all the information on how to be this person that's crazy there's so much game you have to learn like none of that it was all oh, okay you want to be this person boom i had the identity that i am this person i didn't have to learn anything rather I just had to trust and let go that I am this person. And naturally, what came out was attractive because I saw myself as this person. I didn't learn anything. It just, it just uh, I allowed myself or Mother Ayahuasca allowed me to be this person that's within I was already this person, this version of the version of myself. I was keeping, I was keeping hidden because I thought, well, I'm not that good at game yet. I haven't watched enough. I haven't watched enough videos yet. I haven't talked to e talked to enough girls yet. All these things of thinking what I have to do to get good at game, so that I can be good was keeping this hidden inside of me. 
But the moment Mother I Mother Ayahuasca was like, hey, you're good at game, this opened up. And I was. I was so smooth. I was so myself. I was so just natural, not thinking about it because I trusted that I was good at game. So what this changed in my life of is, is realizing that naturally I have it all within me. That the journey of whatever journey I'm on, it's, it's not to learn more. It's not to be more, but it's to remove what is blocking my natural self that already knows. This changed how I saw self-development. This changed how I saw how to overcome stuttering. This changed how I saw to overcome anything. It's like, oh, I don't have to learn more techniques, more this, more that. No. I, what it is, is just unpeeling the onion. Because at my core, at my core, I can be whoever the fuck I want to be. And I know that, and I trust that. And this experience showed that to me. It was, I still get chills of like how powerful this was. So that's the second, that's, the second lesson the first lesson remember was presence i came in with the intention of what is stuttering and mother ayahuasca didn't show me here this is it no it trained me to stop thinking of like oh how am i going to award this to my family how 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 am i going to say this so it sounds cool It trained me to stop, like, stop, stop with those thoughts. Be here in this moment right now, or else you're going to puke and you're going to feel like shit. It trained me. And when it trained me over and over again, I was like, oh, wait, this is, this is what I actually needed. This, this is very fucking clear to me that when I'm present, when I'm in this moment, when I'm completely surrendering to this moment, and there's no resistance of trying to, um, con trying to control it, trying to trying to control how I'm being perceived, or trying to ward things so I sound cool. I'm just in this moment, and I'm being. There's no stuttering, and I know that, and that's truth, and it resonates. And I'm like, fuck, this is true with other people too. And it's the same thing with premature ejaculation. It's the same thing with social anxiety. All these things, it's only, these things are only true when you're in your mind, when you're thinking. These things do not exist in the present moment, period. And the second lesson, again, was you, you, you have it all within you. I was storing, I was, had a story in my, head, in my head that I'm not good enough, that I'm not good with girls because I, I haven't done enough of this i haven't learned enough of this but the moment i had the i the identity of you're you're good you're good you don't need to learn more you're you're the best in the world right now i acted like it and this made me re this made me realize that that was within me always that i didn't need to learn more to yeah i didn't need to learn more shit I, to add on to me, I had to unpeel why I think I wasn't good enough. Why I think that I still needed to learn more. And just be my natural self. These two lessons changed my life. As you can probably tell the power um, that they could have on somebody. If you feel it yourself, I'm glad. Um, yeah, that's episode six. And remember, there's no questions I'm answering at this one because there was only one I got. So if you have questions about anything, really, 
um, drop it down. There's a bar you can add in your question down in the description. And I look forward to answering it on the next podcast. With all that said, I love you and I'll see you.